Call her law Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rakako Dash. Shalom to my hopeful, you like elder brother over here in my congregation, Sharayat. Shalom to all you hopeful, you like elders out there of the Israelite nation who rule well. Namely, the hopeful, you like elder apostles over at the Great Millstone Church. Peace and many blessings be as always to all you hopeful, you like men who are diligently laboring, bringing forth the true doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All of you who are scattered amongst the earth, namely the hopeful elect brothers that I personally labor with. Likewise, peace and many blessings be as well to the rest of the one third, all the true believers out there of the Israelite nation. It's the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6, and the ninth verse. For Esau is the end of the world. So we'll kick it off with that. Speaking about Esau and Esau being today the current powers that rule over the world, who we today know or call so called white people or simply the white race, all right, who according to the scriptures are the Edomites, the people who come from this man whose name was Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and it's implying in the scripture here that Esau. Is going to be the end of the world. When we're speaking about the world, we're not speaking about the end of the earth and its being. As the scriptures tell you, the earth abided forever. So the earth is not going to end. The current world, meaning the current rulership, the current government, the current powers that be, the earth being given into the hands of the wicked, which when we go into the scriptures, we can denote the nation of Edom, the Edomites, who come from Esau to be the wicked. So the end of their dominion of the earth is what's being implied when we speak of the end of the world. All right. And their world, as we see, is crumbling before our face. And to slightly just touch on the topic about this word world. You know, we see it in everyday speech when we speak about the different worlds that are upon the earth, the fashion world, the sports world. You know, we have places called Disney World, so on and so forth. These are all different worlds or organizations that are simultaneously happening, meaning they all happen at the same time, but they are separate. So this current world is just implying the current rulership, which is, again, implying in the scripture for Esau is the end of the world. His world is going to come to an end. He has boundaries that he, he can't go past. So the so-called white man's world is going to end eventually. And that's major for this lesson because that's what um, I ultimately want to point out, the fact that the current world, that B is still going. Although we see it crumbling, it hasn't come to an end yet. And thus, you Israelites, who are today known as so-called black people, you are not free. You are still currently in the hands of your oppressors, your enemies, those who brought you into slavery, those who took your land and raped, robbed, and pillaged you, you know, and put you into subjection underneath their foot. And when I speak about so-called black people, I'm speaking to the so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, and so-called Native American and Seminole Indian people who are scattered amongst the earth, who are all, in fact, the Israelites, God's chosen people. So when we continue reading here, it says in Jacob, Jacob being the original name of Israel, the man whose name was changed to Israel according to the scriptures, who is the father of the Israelite nation, the Israelites, once again being you so-called black people. All right, for in Jacob is the beginning, the beginning of what? The world of it that followeth. That's what the it is, the world, meaning us being put back in our true estate, our true um, purpose, which is a governing class people that are above all people upon the face of the earth, holy, set apart. All right, God's chosen people. We were created to rule over all of these heathen nations. But that happens when we keep it on the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. 
and those laws, statutes, and commandments were given to our forefathers that we fell away from, and thus our current estate, which is a low estate, cursed. And ultimately, the earth, which we are to be ruling, given over to the hands of the powers that be today, which is the wicked. Again, who we know to be the so-called white race. So for Esau, the so-called white man is the end of the, of the current world, this world that we see today. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And we're going to receive our world, all right, our rulership of this world, us being our true estate upon the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai being who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. All right, when he comes back, he's going to establish correction upon the earth. Thus, the one third, namely, of the Israelite nation, those of the Israelite nation who were written to be able to receive this word, repent. And come and serve our true power, which is Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right? The kingdom is going to start with us being corrected in the two thirds of our nation, of the Israelite nation, who will not receive this word, who will not repent to be destroyed, and all these other heathen nations being put in subjugation under our authority, thus becoming our captives, simply said, slaves in our kingdom which will be a kingdom that goes on and is run forever in righteousness through the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. But as of right now, we're still in our captivity. That's something we can't lose sight of. Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 9 says, For ye are not as yet come to the rest and to thine inheritance. And um, when you read in the book of Deuteronomy, this was written as the Israelites were leaving the Egyptian captivity under the hand of Pharaoh, All right? We were delivered out of the hands of Pharaoh. Moses was used to part the Red Sea and we walked through it. And we came into the wilderness. And these are the words that the Heavenly Father gave to us through the mouth of Moses. All right? And it's current of what we're reading. So it's similar to what we're living right now. We went through cargo, slave ships, we went through shackles and, you know, yokes of irons, you know, completely being upon us in slavery. And we, you know, have come out of that stage of slavery because I don't want to say we come out of slavery, not to contradict what I already said, but we have come out of physical straight bondage and are pretty much inside a state of mental bondage at this time as the curse it says, he will put a yoke of iron upon our neck and two, we be destroyed. All right. So the shackles came off, but we're still destroyed as a people. Thus us believing that we're so-called black people, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Indians, so on and so forth. Us believing that freedom was granted to us, though we still have to serve our enemies, who is the so-called white man, who is still ruling the world in hunger thirst and nakedness, meaning we need him for everything that we desire. When we go to grocery stores, we have to go to his stores. If we own a store, it's owned on his block. If we need clothes, we have to go to his retailers. So we are still to this day in slavery. We still bond men and bond women. We have not been released out of the hands of our oppressors, our enemies. For ye are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord, Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai at this point, your God giveth you. So we have not reached our true estate just yet. We haven't reached our um, our own land. We're not even back in our land, which is Israel. We haven't been released out of slavery. So yet, as the scripture says, we haven't come to our rest and to our inheritance, which is rulership, when we actually receive our kingdom. Once again, going back to where we started, for Esau is the end of the world. But Esau's world has not ended yet. So, you know, job not done yet. We have more to endure. And we have to understand that and not get besides ourselves. It's the book of Micah chapter 2 in verse 10. Arise ye and depart. That's why we're being warned this right here. Being admonished to arise and depart. You know, this is how we're going to actually escape. And this arising and departing is us doing so in a spiritual realm first and foremost. That's 
those of the Israelite nation who you see um, forsook the current world. Esau's world and have come back to who we truly are, understanding we're the Israelites, understanding that we're meant to rule, learning his law, statutes, and commandments, walking accordingly. That's how we arise out of this current place that we're in, first and foremost, spiritually. It says, for this is not your rest. Once again, this isn't our rest. We haven't met rest yet. We haven't been given our true inheritance, which is rulership, having these nations under our foot in captivity. And it tells you because it is polluted. This current world, the world that is ran by the wicked, who is the so-called white man, who is Esau, Edom, has polluted the whole world. Everything's polluted. You think about the air, water, food, um, just people's minds, everything. Everything has been polluted, so we can't stay in it. We have to arise and depart. It says it shall destroy you, all right? This is being told. This is a warning. It's going to destroy you to believe and to think that you actually have met freedom in this current world, to believe that you in the land of the free and the home of the brave, to believe that Esau has ever actually, you know, given you anything and has allowed you to be free. That mindset will destroy you. It says even with a sore destruction. Regardless of what you believe, regardless how many bags you grabbed, you know, how many come-ups you have made, how many cars you have, how big your house is, you're still in a situation of captivity, you know? And that's ultimately as a whole nation. Let's come back to the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 119. In verse 45. It says, and I walk at liberty, and I will walk at liberty. All right? This is how we escape walking at liberty. And liberty, when you go into it, is freedom. We're speaking of true freedom here, though. It says, for I seek thy precepts. That's how we're actually going to achieve true freedom, through seeking the Lord's precepts, his law, statutes, and commandments, understanding the true doctrine of this Bible. That's how we're actually going to be able to achieve freedom. Again, as always, speaking to you Israelites out there, the hopeful elect, you know, the one third of the Israelite nation. All right, so walking at liberty, seeking the Lord's precepts is how we're truly going to achieve freedom that we're looking for. It's the book of First Peter, chapter 2. We start at verse 15. It says, says for so is the will of the Heavenly Father. So the will of the Heavenly Father is for us to repent. And serve him, all right? His elect. It says that with well doing, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So, with that well doing, our well doing is following those precepts, learning the precepts, coming back to this truth. And that's how we put to silence all of the lies that we have been infested with. Us believing that we're black, us believing that we actually been set free, but yet we're still in the hand of our our oppressors. We put to silence all of those invalid thoughts through truth. And the ignorant man, the foolish man, all right, he deals with those thoughts. He promotes that. He walks on and believes that he's free. He believes the so-called white man has granted him freedom. Verse 16 says that's free. And it's just as a continuation of what's read in verse 15. It says that's free. And not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Once again, liberty is freedom, all right? What we observe in front of us, this time that we have, you know, us being able to go out and about and, um, you know, do as we please, as we think, you know? That's the liberty that we're speaking of. The time that you have, as we know, um, according to the scriptures, the word, you know, has gone out into the um, ends of the earth. Have they not all heard? Yeah, they have all heard. So most Israelites have heard that they're Israelites, you know, so they have they don't have no real excuse, but instead they use this time of liberty, you know, what we um see as freedom in this current world as a chance to be malicious, meaning staying in sin, walking around and continuing in ways that are destroying us and using the um ability of acting as if you don't know as an opportunity to do so. These people are going to be um you know, they're going to be judged for that. But it says, but as the servants of the Heavenly Father. So 
that's what we're truly doing. You know, you true believers out there, those of you who have, you know, come back to the true doctrine of the Israelite nation. You have come back and become as servants of the Heavenly Father. That's us seeking his precepts. Us actually truly chasing true liberty, which is freedom. So we get this last one. I'm going to close out St. John chapter 8. In verse 32, it says, and ye shall know the truth. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 31. It says, then said Yahweh Shai to those Jews which believed on him. All right. The true believers out there of the Israelite nation. If you continue in my word, we continue in these precepts, which we just read, brought us liberty, brings us liberty. It says, then are ye my disciples indeed. And the disciple is one who is a student, who is under the discipline of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. All right, returning back to our true power, being converted into, you know, actually who we ought to truly be. The Israelites, God's chosen people, verse 32 says, and ye shall know the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So only this truth is truly going to make you free. You can't be granted freedom from your oppressors because that, that's not the business they're in. They don't want to set you free. They're only going to feed you lies. And the only way that we can battle that in our current estate is through this truth, knowing who we are, claiming our identity and following our heritage, which are the words that is in the, the doctrine of these um, scriptures. So John, St. John 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Lord willing, this is edifying. Call Allah, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai. Shalom.